SaaS or software as a service is dead or it's dying. At least that's what the internet has been saying for the past week. In this video, we're going to discuss what that means. And I'm going to show you with a real world demonstration why that is actually the case. And it's not just hyperbole. And then we're going to look at what the implications are with the eventual death of SaaS. So SaaS software as a service, this is the dominant business model in the software industry. It's essentially when you purchase software on a subscription basis. So either paying a monthly or an annual fee. Of course, it wasn't always this way. If we go back to the 80s or 90s, the dominant model back then was licensing. So you would pay a one-time fee for your software on a disc, and then you would load that and install it onto your computer, and you would only upgrade when you were ready to do so. And it's with the rise of the internet and when cloud computing became more reliable that the industry transitioned to the SaaS model, which is far better for companies and investors, given that it's a consistent cash flow for them as opposed to just one-time payments. But now the internet is saying that SaaS is dead. So why is the internet saying this and what does it mean? Well, where all this comes from is an interview with Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. And he went on to explain how much of the application software that we use today are eventually going to disappear and be replaced by agentic systems. So to be fair, he never actually specifically said SaaS is dead. He never used those words. But if the CEO of the largest SaaS company in the world is saying that we're at a point of transformational change, I think it is important to understand what it is that he's saying. So first of all, what is an agent or an agentic system? I'm not going to get into a deep definition. I published a video that provides a more in-depth explanation of agents and agent systems. So I'll provide a link to that in the description. But if you look at a typical unaugmented LLM, like the original chat GPT, it's really just a one shot process. So it's very sequential. You give it a prompt, it provides an output. It doesn't have any ability to interact with the world outside of its box or get real time information or store any memory. But then you can augment that LLM with things like tools that allow it to interact with the outside world memory so that it can store and retrieve information. And then what really sets the agent system apart is that instead of just providing one response to the user's input, it actually operates in a planning loop. So it can carry out far more complex tasks, essentially creating a plan, going through that plan step by step, and even backtracking and changing its approach. But what does all this have to do with SaaS being dead? Aren't agents just another type of software? And for most people, this really just sounds like the industry is continuing to evolve as it always has. And now there's going to be a new way of creating software, but for the end user, it may not necessarily make that much of a difference. But actually in this case, it does make a big difference to the end user. And the best way for me to explain this is really just to provide you with a real world example of what this could look like. And I'm going to use a situation that I encountered, a small but annoying problem in my life. Every couple of months, I have to merge a number of PDF documents and I have to do that four or five times. So usually what I'll do is I'll just go out and I'll find free software. I'll use it a couple of times before it tries to charge me. And then I'll switch to another free program. This last time I decided to create a more permanent solution. But when I looked at the subscription fee for the software I was using, it was $12 a month. And I really don't like these small subscription fees to just keep piling. Now that's an example of SaaS. This is software, which is, would be provided to me for a monthly subscription fee. But rather than pay that fee and have all of these monthly subscriptions pile up, I decided why not just develop my own PDF merger so that I could use it whenever I wanted. Now in the past, this would take some time planning, writing the code, troubleshooting it. But with advancements in AI, there has been an absolute explosion in the ability of code generation agents to produce full applications with only a couple of lines of input text from the user. There are lots of different options out there for people, and most of them do have a free version. One that I really like is bolt.new. Just go to your web browser and type in bolt.new, and then you can sign up for a free account. I just added this one single prompt. I want to create a PDF merger. I can upload PDF documents from my computer and merge them into a single PDF. 
And then I'll submit this and the agent is going to get to work writing all of the code. So you can see it's actually downloading all of the packages and installing them in its system. It's writing the code here. And then in about two minutes, it gave me this, a fully functional PDF merger with a nice user interface. And it works exactly how I need. Plus, if I want to, I can customize it for my own use case. And I can deploy it live to the internet in just a couple of clicks. So if you think about what happened here, I had a problem that I needed a solution to that normally SaaS software would provide. But because I was able to use an AI agent to build that software for me, I don't have to pay a subscription to anybody. I have fully customized software, which is mine for free. The implications of that are absolutely massive. Now, this is a very simple example, but this is also an example that did not require any coding ability or any development knowledge. Anybody could have created this application for themselves or an application significantly more complicated. Now, agents still have problems. They're not always reliable. So we're not at the point where they're going to be replacing major software systems yet. What Nati is saying is that an agent can basically come in and do most of the work on the fly in a very customized, flexible way that these big ERP and CMR systems and other SaaS systems are doing. So there's going to be a transition in the way that software is created and delivered and accessed. And this is going to have sweeping ramifications for the technology industry and really just the world overall. I'll actually take this a step further. In this case, I used an AI agent to build a piece of software with a user interface. But why do we even really need that user interface? That may in itself become something that is archaic. Rather than have to go to a website or access a piece of software, I could just tell the agent what I want. And it could perform that function on the fly without me ever having to see a website or see a user interface. Now, this is definitely a transition that is happening. However, I don't think it's going to be quite as fast as what a lot of people suspect. With AI agents, it's their autonomy and their flexibility that make them so powerful, but they're not necessarily the right solution for all tasks. That same autonomy and flexibility can make them unreliable and unpredictable. And there are some software systems that can't allow for any level of unpredictability. The reality is that the technology needed for these code generating agents to work hasn't really existed for much more than a year. There's been a massive explosion in innovation specifically in this space. And when you think of all the software that you use and interact with, in the not too distant future, we may have a world where all of us without any coding knowledge are able to create whatever software we need and share it seamlessly with each other. Or have AI agents so powerful, we don't actually need software at all. So it's all very exciting. I'm looking forward to exploring this further. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.